Welcome back to the vlog. You can see I shaved. I was trimming and I went too deep right here and so I just had to go back to zero. I look like my brother Joey now. So this week we've got a lot done on the shop. This shop has not been used in many, many, many years. A lot of the sweeping up is bird poop. I'm gonna get electric in there soon. I'll be able to use this place in, in short time. The move continues. This week in school we did some leather work. I showed the students how to use a, a stitching fork and just hand stitch up. And in this case I made a, a carry for the camera that I'm shooting on right now so I can kind of keep it on my hip, Casey Neistat style. It worked out great actually. I've been carrying the camera right on my hip. A great place to get leather and leather supplies is at a place called Tandy Leather Online. And uh, I don't work with them in any way, shape or form. I've only ever purchased stuff off the website. It's a great place to get tools and some small bits and pieces of leather without like a huge commitment. You can buy small pieces, big pieces, half hides, full hides, and they always have sales on the front page, so check out Tandy Leather. I'm wearing glasses because I just woke up and my eyes look like I've been punched in the face, so I hope you forgive that I have these glasses on. The I Make License Plate Club is growing. Everyone's sending me emails from different states. I'm gonna compile a list, an email list. So guys, thank you very much. Guys, thank you all so much for the wonderful packages. Thank you, I can't thank you enough. There's some wonderful, beautiful, heartfelt notes and along with those gifts, so thank you guys. I really appreciate it. When you answer a Craigslist ad, you never know who you're gonna meet. This week, I met this guy. Fletcher Coddington, I'm a metal worker. Started when I'm 17, and I'm 70, so that's, I don't know, I can't do math. And I went to a school that taught me how to weave and spin and carve wood and throw pots and uh, carpentry, wood carving, stone masonry, and metal seemed to be the thing that spoke the most to me because you can go backwards. You can't go backwards in other materials. If you cut a piece of wood too short, it's too short. You can't weld on another piece. I've had mentors, but I'm pretty much self-taught. I had one mentor in sculpture. His name is Ludwig Dirchenek, and he got to be in the Rockefeller Collection and the Met and the Modern. Alexander Calder was a mentor of mine. He was an interesting person. And Gordon Anderson, probably my main mentor in life, he was a machinist down the road. Oh, but he was crazy. He was an, an amazing uh, savant when it came to machine shop and stuff. My old man didn't know one end of a screwdriver from the other. And he was a literary person, and I couldn't read, so we didn't get along very well. You know, just doing it is what... And living in a, in a community that has the clientele that this community does, where money isn't necessarily an object. Right. As long as you can supply the object, they're willing to pay the money. I'd love to have a uh, engine lathe, an engraver's engine lathe. That's one of the things that... Um, Is that like a Rose engine kind of thing? Yep. yep. I'd love to have one of those. If I can't find a machine that'll do what I want to do, I just make it. Meet Greg Sims. Greg Sims shares a place inside of Fletcher's big, tremendous 15,000 square foot studio. This guy is an amazing knife maker, and he's only been doing it for four years. Prior to that, he had a regular job installing floors, and now he makes these knives. These knives are incredible, and his ability to combine different colored metals to make these beautiful Damascus patterns is just insane. And when I'm ready, I'm gonna ask him to give me a couple of lessons. What's Thank your Instagram? 
It's uh, Kane Custom Knives. Kane Custom Knives on Instagram. Yep. Cool. Spell it. K-A-Y-N-E. Fletcher, Greg, thank you for showing me around. It was an amazing, inspiring afternoon. My initial contact with that Craigslist ad was with a guy named Kelly, and Kelly recognized my name, and we immediately kind of got into just a regular friendly conversation outside of the sort of formalities of Craigslist. And he invited me to Hammer Inn the weekend of April 28th. Me and Brett are gonna go to a Hammer Inn here in New York. The whole reason was for me to look at and purchase this power hammer. I really feel like I'm probably getting in over my head with this power hammer, but I know I have no experience as a blacksmith, but the reason I like this power hammer is because it's an old piece of equipment and because it needs to be reassembled and it needs some machining. This is how I learn things. I force myself to fix stuff. I force myself into situations that I have to commit. So I purchased this power hammer. I'm gonna pick it up in about a month when everybody's ready to be able to help me move it. We're gonna get it back over here and with my machine shop here around me, we're gonna try and get this thing in order. We're gonna find a place for it. I'm gonna get the motor hooked up. It is a beautiful piece of machinery that was built in 1900. It has a built on stamp on it, built in 1900. I think it says August of 1900, which is pretty amazing. I'm gonna ask you guys, the help in guiding the way for me to restore this beautiful piece of machinery. As far as my next shop is concerned, it hasn't been used in many, many years. And this back door was on the shop and you can see the bottom of it is completely rotted off. And a friend of mine in the city gave me this, this stairwell door. Me and Willie installed it this week. There's a couple of little tricks in here. For some reason, whenever they manufacture steel doors, they put the worst screws. And it's the most important screws to get out. They make them extremely hard to come out and the tips always strip immediately, even on brand new ones. And this door was no different than my experience with every steel door ever made. The screws strip and they cross thread. Whoever makes those doors, thank you for being consistent. In the 80s when I was at the School of Visual Arts, my brother Joey and I came up with this cartoon. It was really Joey's brainchild. And if you know my brother, this little figurine is modeled after Joey. And it uh, is a, it's a, a cartoon hero that has life lessons. Every comic strip with our hero is some crazy little bizarre backhanded life lesson. Something tragic happens, but he finds the bizarre good in everything that happens. So our hero was, was my little foray into the comic book world while I was a student at the School of Visual Arts. Cleaning up this week, found a box of these figurines that I made. I used to sell these at a local comic book store in the 80s in Long Island. Anybody has these, hopefully they'll be worth money someday. Right here is the only ones I have left in my whole entire life. They were sort of my ice pick when I was at the School of Visual Arts. In my senior year, I made hundreds of these. They're all resin casted and hand painted by me, vacuum formed and uh, we actually silk screened every one of the cards that the figurine is on. This Our Hero figure was really the beginning of my entrepreneurial endeavors as, a, as an adult. So this means a lot to me, finding these. I'm gonna save them. And then the one under there. I experimented this week making a hot stamp for my buddy Kyle at RR Builders. As you know, Kyle's gonna be working on my building here on the property. And we moved along, we got the trusses designed, so now I'm just waiting for a price on the trusses. I'll put a down payment on the trusses, and the ball will be put into motion, so. Kyle, thank you for your patience and hard work on this with me. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna try a reverse stamp. So we did the positive. I'm gonna to attempt to machine the reverse of this. So work is moving along on my three 
key star key hub that I'm working on and like everything else I jump into I force myself through the process to see where and how to learn how to do these things it's the most important thing is to have a project to learn how to do what you want to do with that project. In this instance, I'm going through all the various machining steps. I'm getting some advice from some friends. I was really off course, and Kevin, thank you so much this week because you got me in a good direction texting with my friend Kevin Lazat to do the slots this week, so you'll see that next week. My other buddy Kevin helped me with the file, so we're going to get that going on the Tormac. Once this is ready to machine, I'm going to make soft jaws for that and keep things moving along, so thank you guys. Thank you to Scott at Moto Alliance for sending me these lights. I'm going to put them on the Polaris and I'm going to do a little video, probably going to plasma cut out some brackets that will bolt onto the frame and you'll see that in an upcoming video. So brother, thank you for these. He gave me a 10 inch, a bunch of 2 inch and a 40 inch. It's going to light up the whole yard. This week's music credits include Sean Hogan on that little drum beat at the beginning. I love that drum beat, Sean. Thank you, brother. Of course, Raina on the live violin. And my good, wonderful, beautiful friend, Natalie Murphy, for doing the, the bluegrass riffs. Natalie, thank you. Everybody go follow Natalie on Instagram. You'll see her below. She needs fame. And push her to do live music on Instagram. Everybody tell her to do that and say, I told you to do that. Thank you for watching. Next week. Chick, 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 chick. Look at that one. That one's really gonna be. This is a rooster right here. See this one with all the speckles? Wow. Brown and whatnot. This bright gray one is scary looking. This is my one of my favorites. I think this is my favorite bird right here. <laughs>